now listening to Protecting Your Nest with Board Certified Family Medicine and Obesity Medicine Specialist, Dr. Tony Hampton. For more, visit drtonyhampton.com. Welcome to the Protecting Your Nest podcast. One of the greatest joys of hosting this podcast is having a YouTube channel and and just getting a chance to uh, meet people, uh, interact with others who are on a journey to be as healthy as they possibly can be. And no matter how prepared or inspired we are to take that journey, it's nice to know that we don't have to do it alone. But what's even more exciting is knowing that we can take this journey not only with others, but we can inspire people we never even meet, which is one of the reasons why I feel so blessed to have this platform. Um, in fact, the guest who's on today's episode is someone I met following another uh, social media influencer, and that's Carrie of Homestead How YouTube channel. Uh, he inspired today's guest to start his YouTube channel. And I, and I just think inspiring each other is such an important thing we all should continue to do. Today's guest is JT. JT and his family have a YouTube channel entitled the po- Poco Moonshine Family, where they, they won't post a video unless it's fun and engaging. And on his channel, they share their journey of uh, how they've healed. In particular, JT uh, was able to overcome his weight issue as well as sleep apnea and some digestive issues. He's highly motivated to share his story of healing, which is why I wanted him to join us today on today's episode. And with that, my friend, JT, I welcome you to the Protecting Your Nest podcast. I'm glad to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, well, I'm happy to have you. I love your hat. I love your glasses. I love all that craziness in the background for those who are checking us out on YouTube. (laughs) JT is the man. He's doing his thing, sharing his healing message. And I just want want everybody to get to know you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in uh, Chicago soon. I know we're going to have kind of a meetup as we hang out with Carrie, who's working on this carnivore diet. Uh, documentary. And uh, I just can't wait to see you guys in person, meet your wife and looking forward to that. But let's let's let the audience meet your wife and your family now. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, your family dynamics. And also, I know we're recording this right before Halloween, how you guys plan on enjoying Halloween. Well, you know, we're a small family. It's just me, my wife, and my son. He's going to be turning two on November 3rd, so I cannot believe I almost have a two-year-old. It's it's wild. Um, we're going to be going to pick out some pumpkins today at our nice. local beef farmer, so I'm going to be picking up some ribeyes. Nice. And um, I also uh, was talking to him about some lard so I could do some uh, frying up my chicken because I absolutely love fried chicken. And... Um, they also messaged me. I, last time I was there, I was telling them that some people's stomachs get upset with the uh, pork bacon. And I mm-hmm. said, you got any beef bacon? And he's like, no. And uh, he texted me about a day ago. And he's like, thanks to you. We got a new product in stock. I said, what's that? He said, beef bacon. I was like, let's wow. go. <laughs> so I'm going to be picking up some beef bacon uh, and uh, having a fun time. It's And I think a lot of us should really get to know um, our, our farmers, like my yeah. family, and just um, get they're another family too, so um, we're gonna be hanging out with them today, and it's it's very uh, nice, and we're just we're just about health and and family. Family is one of my core values. It's one of the things that's most important to me, which is why I really nice. made my channel about my family, the Poco Your family. Movie. You're you're living. All right, what city are you in? I'm in Thienesville. It's about 12 minutes north of Milwaukee. Oh, okay, so not far from Milwaukee, but it also suggests that. Because Milwaukee is a city, Chicago is a city where I'm at. So it sounds like if you just get in your car and drive just a little bit outside the city, you can find a farmer that you can connect with. So, um, uh, how did you find this particular farmer? Uh, what I would suggest to people do is what I did. I went on Google and I typed in "grass-fed beef near me." Nice. And it, it brought up a couple butcher shops and about 16 different farms that were by me that that are beef farmers and. I uh, make it, I'm trying to make it my mission to change the culture of how we're mm-hmm. shopping. Um, they maybe can't feed all of us, you know, like a Walmart or something could. But if we could limit our trips to some of those big places, those big supermarkets and go um, more local and keep the dollar local. And, you know, those cows 
Um, they were shipped down the road, maybe a mile mm-hmm. to be processed and back to that farm. You know, it's, mm-hmm. you know where the meat's from and how it's been being treated. I think that's very important. Um, better food, better mood. I like that. And I 100% agree. And I'll definitely, I wrote that down because uh, I have not done that type of search. I've had some patients who uh, are aligned with what we're saying and teaching uh, who have suggested, but I'm going to do that exact same thing. And I'm a big fan of lard. I use Farro. Uh, they have a lard product that they, they make creams and stuff. So I have lard on my face as we speak. So I've who got knew? tallow on my face. That's there funny. you go. There you go. There you go. That's funny. That's, yeah. that's really cool. I've so we're put it on before the interview. So man, I'm got it. Tiny, and... you guys. That's why. Well, you know what's funny, man? Who'd have thought, right? I mean, I would have never uh, imagined such a thing, especially having been plant-based in the past. So let's let's have a little fun. Uh, you always give me a hard time about the Bears, man. You're killing me. So. <laughs> did they <laughs> so, win that game you sent me? They a- did. They was- did. That's the thing. They won that game that when, when we chatted about it. <laughs> and um, we're still trying to get our quarterback uh, uh, back, but they're they're hanging in there. So what's My that? My father is a is a Chicago Bears fan. He's from oh, is he? But uh, he, I think he likes to get on people's nerves, and uh, he likes to fight and argue with everybody in the <laughs> state of Wisconsin. So what better way than to be a Chicago Bears fan? That's that's well. Tell him a uh, vir- virtual hug from Doctor Hampton, man, he to your dad. Get along for sure. What about uh, the rivalry for you, Packers and Bears? What ha- has that meant anything to you personally? Because I know you're a sports guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, it it means. Um, it's like nostalgia. It's, it's, yeah. it brings back a lot of great memories growing up watching the Chicago bears versus the Packers, no yeah. matter who wins, who loses. It's just That's a great right. time to sit down with family and, uh, just to spend time cheering for your local team. And it also, um, should, should teach you about good, healthy, um, competition, you know, like right. uh, there's nothing wrong with a, with a, good, healthy competition, you know, fighting it out, you know, gritting your teeth and getting it done. And that's right. And giving it your all, whether you win or lose, I think that's a great lesson we can all learn that uh, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some. That's right. But as long as we got out there and and competed and gave it our best, I think that's what, what matters. So it represents a lot to me, really. I, I love that. Uh, a great way to frame it and... <clears throat> And and because I'm still a little competitive in spite of what you said, <laughs> I looked I looked it up because it felt like it felt like the Packers have owned us in the last, I don't know, ten years or whatever it's been. So I looked it up just to get a feel for that. And I, I had a little uh uh relief because it looks like um that, you know, they played two hundred and seven games, right? And okay. it looks like the the number of wins versus losses was not as different. The Bay, I think the Green Bay Packers, and I don't think that doesn't include this year, won 106 games, and the Chicago Bears won 95 games. So, so it's a little it's closer a than I thought. Yeah, it's a great rivalry. I mean, that's almost equal, but yet it didn't feel that way. Uh, but we also <laughs> have another problem with the Chicago. Uh, Wisconsin rivalry, and that's the the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, now, oh, I want to say oh. this first: my health system advocate merged with Aurora, which is in Wisconsin, right? So it's Advocate Aurora, and then we merged with Atrium, so we're in six states now. But one of the things I had to accept, I have to be okay with the Packers and the Bucks, and then you guys get Kawhi Leonard for Christ's sake. <laughs> Or Damian Lillard, Damian Lillard. Damian, Damian Lillard, right. Not Kawhi, right. So so how does that feel to get, and I saw the first game and he did what Damian Lillard does. So how was that, uh, how did that feel to know you guys have like literally two and a half, uh, maybe you can say three, but two like extreme, literally top 10 players on one team? It's been a long time coming. For a long time, the Bucks are such a small city. We don't get many big names. We don't get mm-hmm. much recognition. But um, I got to give Giannis some credit. He is changing the culture. He mm-hmm. um, about being faithful and just you know goes back to putting your all out there and doing the best you can. And I think people see that integrity on the court, and they want to. They, it's contagious. You know, consciousness is contagious. They want to be around that. They. They want to uh, play for a team that's got those uh, core values, you know, mm-hmm. and I think the culture is changing and it means a lot that Lillard, Damian Lillard came on over because 
Um, we're our small city, but yeah. um, we have great core values. And I think these guys are representing us very well. And they've got a lot of integrity. They've, they've got a lot of passion mm-hmm. and they've got a lot of uh, discipline to, you know, keep practicing over and over. So I'm glad, I think he's going to bring a lot of flavor to the city and I think he's going to make the games really exciting. So yeah, it, it should be good morale for the city. It should be. You all, you already had a, a, a great culture and I think Giannis again brought that, but to bring a guy who, uh, as we know, is known as the closer, uh, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be tough to beat you guys, but it's going to be, I love great basketball, so I'll enjoy it. My team, it's going to be a minute, but we'll work with the Bulls and see what they can do. Hey, so. you guys had, man, many years with Michael Jordan I know. and Scottie Pippen. And That's right. You guys have just, you guys are the example, man. You guys set the bar, honestly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I definitely was inspired by that. And even when my, I used to have season tickets and I would literally uh, have my babies bundled, you know, because it's so cold in Chicago, you know, going to all of those games and me and my wife. And so we, we're, we're huge fans, but we just like sports in general. So, so yeah, I was enough a of, Michael Jordan fan. Growing yeah, up. that's it, man. He's the man. So, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Poco Moonshine family YouTube channel. Uh, that may not like make sense to people. <laughs> yeah. Talk a little bit about where that title comes from. And I know it's kind of evolved, but talk a little bit about that channel for those who are going to check that out. Absolutely. Uh, it has nothing to do with alcohol or liquor. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm running my own moonshine business. <laughs> right. Right. And I'm not, uh, it, it came from me and my dad. We snuck onto some private property and there was a <laughs> pond there and we went, we were looking for fishing ponds. We were looking for them spots that no one goes to, you know, the big fish are just waiting for something right. to slap into the water. And we found it. And I'm telling you, we caught fish after fish and me and my father had so much fun. It was a day of family, fun, and adventure. Huh. Uh, we did get kicked out of there. They didn't like us uh, being on the private property fishing. But um, as much as they, they could uh, kick me out of that pond, um, they, they couldn't take that that experience out of me. And mm. before we left, I noticed there was a wood sign, uh, like a two-by-four stuck in the ground with two boards going across the top. And I'm painted on there. It said Poco Moonshine. And mm. that was the name of the pond I was fishing at. Ah. It was this little beautiful pond with a white birch tree sticking out of the middle of it. Like it was just so I've never seen a, a, a pond that had a birch tree sticking out of it. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Um, so that was a day of family fun and adventure. And I said, if I can dedicate a YouTube channel to being a beacon of light, to, you know, in, in a world that maybe isn't filled with a lot of positivity, if I could bring that energy, that positivity and let Poco moonshine uh, go and the universe was calling me to that, that that sign that pond and what it represents and what it could represent for the for the world and i said i want to i want to dedicate my channel to family fun and adventure and i'm doing some carnivore content but i feel like uh you carnivores are my family i'm having fun on this diet because i'm feeling great and life is an adventure so i feel like i'm still paying homage to my uh original mission yeah, you definitely want to maintain that. Uh, I think that um, Carrie with Homestead Howe is trying to do that as well. Um, I guess he's still doing that content too on Thursdays, I think. But let me tell you, man, um, I don't know. I felt family uh, at going to Low Carb USA, now called the Symposium for Metabolic Health. I felt it. You know, I started doing the um, Keto uh, Palooza. And Keto Orlando, I felt family, but I honestly didn't really start feeling YouTube family until this whole carnivore, carry, uh, steak and butter gal. And now it's like, man, it feels like amazing to have people who are good people. You know, even your comments so far have already inspired me uh just in terms of the values i mean even talking about Giannis and 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 what you're focused on when you spoke of that uh that is that's that's the kind of family i want to have so i really appreciate having family like this and bringing my doctor expertise versus your life experience expertise and everybody's bringing like a different perspective. And that's why I think all of these different channels, there there can't be enough uh, 
people out there spreading this message. So keep doing that, man. I really just wanted to say that before we get started. But a lot of people come to this channel because they want to heal. And so nice to talk about basketball, nice to talk about your, uh, you know, how you, the origins of your channel. But let's talk a little bit about what you overcame mm. when you changed your diet. You know, what did you overcome and how did you do it? Well, I was originally uh, in the music business. I uh, did a lot of music production. I was in a rap rock group. Um, I worked with these guys behind me, as you can see, ICP and St. Clown Posse. I've worked with a bunch of others, um, making beats for them. And that scene was kind of rough on my body. I did a lot of partying, a lot of drinking, mm -hmm. a lot of smoking. Mm -hmm. And um, along with that, I ate a lot of junk food. And it just it didn't matter what age I was. I, I really, uh, was, was headed towards the grave quick. Cause I, it was all about doing what I wanted when I wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's that lifestyle you're doing music and you're, um, when you're getting success like that, there's just, there's nobody that can tell you anything. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the mindset I had. And it was a terrible mindset. And I developed IBS and I was on stage one day in front of hundreds of people. And I just, I felt like crap. I felt disconnected. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was the only one in the room. Uh, I felt very lonely. And um, I quit after that day. I, I just couldn't do it no more. I, I, I didn't want to perform anymore because I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And I did want to perform, but I, I just I didn't feel good with this IBS. And when I went to the doctors, um, nothing wrong with doctors, okay? Uh, but they would tell me that, uh, you know, IBS, I'm sure as you know, there's no physical damage in there. So right. when they would do tests, they'd say, hey, there's nothing wrong with you. And a couple of, of them even said, well, it's in your head. Mm. A better way of phrasing that, because that kind of makes us patients feel like we're crazy. A better way of that they, I think they could have said it is that it's all in your thinking. Mm -hmm. And part yeah. of that, that thinking was that mindset that you can, you can, drink and, and eat and whatever you do, whatever you want, when you want, and there's going to be no effect. You know, I was invincible and I wasn't. And it was also in my diet, the way I was thinking about the food I was eating, you know, my diet. So when I got to a point where I was just laying in the tub a lot, uh, from my IBS, trying to feel better, um, I was, I was watching Carrie's channel and he was just jumping around like a flying squirrel. And I, I, I just, I couldn't stand it anymore. I was like, I cannot mm -hmm. let this guy have all the fun doing this right. carnival diet. This looks right. too good. And I said, maybe I can get rid of uh, the problems I have. And the worst problem I had was sleep apnea. Mm. And I had three moments where I just woke up out of a dead sleep and my lungs just either they weren't working or they were completely blocked. I, I don't know, but there was absolutely no air coming in and it scared the life out of me. And the third time it happened, it almost got me. I, I was running around the house. I was, I was nervous. I was scared. I couldn't breathe. I was mm -hmm. putting my hands above mm. my head. I thought maybe if I opened up my lungs more and I just got no air and I fell onto the floor. Cause I was, I was on my way out. I, I just was, I, I had nothing left. I, I couldn't mm. breathe. And I crawled out to the kitchen and I was leaned up against the cabinets and I was looking at the oven clock and I just wanted to see what time on the clock I was going to die, honestly. And, um, I gave mm. up. I, I really did. And this voice popped into my head. And I say to this day, the voice wasn't a male voice. It wasn't a female voice. This It just was, you know. And this voice reminded me, it said, you know, if if you give up now, you're done here. And that's that's it for your, your journey in this life. Mm. And I think it it didn't scare me when it said that. It actually empowered me. It It, mm. it helped me realize that the power of a decision that I still had a chance to make a decision. Although I was running out of chances, I, I still was alive at that moment, even though it didn't feel like it. And I said, you know, this, it felt like this conversation lasted forever, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I, I said back, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even a husband yet. I'm not a father yet. This was before I got married. I said, there's things I want to do, do mm -hmm. yet. You know, I'm not, I'm not done. And I'll tell you guys, when I was, in the process of what I felt like was dying, mm. I wasn't afraid of dying because you're you're going to be going through it and there's nothing you can do. So that's not what's going to scare you. Uh, what scared me was all the things flashed in front of my mind that I, 
I squandered. Like I mm. said, my opportunity to be a, a husband, to be a father, um, to to reach more lives. Like I had squandered my opportunity at life because of my mindset. And I I fought really hard and I started to try to breathe and I got mm-hmm. it was like someone was choking me and for 20 minutes that's all the air I could get. Mm-hmm. Just the mm-hmm. tiniest bit of air. But you know, I I couldn't even call 911. I had no energy. I had to focus. I and by the time they got there, I probably would have been dead. So I, I realized realized I had to listen to this voice and I had to fight. I, I had to I had to fight for what I want. You know, I had to be that gladiator in that moment. I had to had to do what I had to do to survive. And it was the longest 20 minutes of my life. It felt like two hours of torture. Mm-hmm. But I slowly kept getting my breath back. And I am so grateful for that, ex- that near-death experience because it really has given me a way new perspective, a different uh, lens to look at life through. Uh, shall we say? And I, I learned the value in, in a single breath, a Mm. a full complete, you don't know how good it feels to get a full, a full Mm -hmm. breath of air until you, you can't get any air until it's taken from you. And you just, it's those little things that you realize are actually big, huge, beautiful blessings in your life. And it's so easy to take the smallest things like that for granted when you haven't had a near death experience. But right. I've, I, I'm, I'm grateful for that experience because I, I have a whole new outlook on life. And I my passion is not to just help people and coach people, but to help them gain that perspective that I have that of all the littlest tiny things in life to enjoy because you might not be here, you know, so that's why I wear these bucket hats. You know, I like, I like cows. I like steak, you know, and yeah, I, 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 I love my family. I represent it on everything. I've got the patches on everything. It's those little things like that, that I might, I might never would have got to enjoy had I died at that moment. So I, I just want people to live life. Like it's your first day, you know, look up at the clouds in amazement. But then also at the end of the day, kiss your wife like it's the last day because you just you never know. So you should live like it's your first and live like it's your last. And I think you're going to have a beautiful life. I love that. I actually told you before we started recording, I had a recording uh, for uh, someone who was in London. And between recordings, I heard my wife because she had to go uh, to work today. And uh, I made sure I got that kiss in. Uh, Those little things matter. Uh, and I really appreciate you, man. I, I think about, uh, you meeting the doctor and again, we, we don't really, uh, as you have not done, you don't demonize the doctors, but you, you just wish things were different. And why weren't the doctors trained to, uh, not say to you, um, that something's wrong with you or nothing's wrong with you when we know something's wrong with you. And why weren't they trained to give you advice? And, and I had to get, my training in nutrition and functional medicine before I even understood uh, that, yes, inflammation and stress can cause irritable bowel. We both had that issue in common, but nobody ever told me about a leaky gut and that those uh, intestinal linings can have leaks where our body then absorbs the things that they shouldn't that can then lead to all kinds of problems, not just issues with irritable bowel, but autoimmune diseases. Uh, and and I lived in a world where even when we go to the question of sleep apnea, where I was trained to uh, diagnose this condition uh, and then treat it with uh, CPAP. I was mm-hmm. not trained to think beyond that. So when people came to me with symptoms of sleep apnea, rather they're, you know, when, when people are very tired all the time, and they're snoring, assuming they know they're snoring, because maybe some people are not, you know, married, Um, you know, headaches and, uh, you know, feeling like you're going to die, choking and gasping for air, uh, you know, uh, that's, or even having a sore throat because your mouth is, you know, maybe open, uh, not being able to focus during the day. When you, when you have these issues, uh, it's, it's a problem. And, and, and it's, and it occurs because you're, the muscles in the back of your throat, they're just, they're, they're too relaxed. They're not allowing you to breathe. 
And uh, it's very frustrating. Uh, and sometimes people have large tonsils and they have other uh, things that are going on. Maybe even the signals in your brain. There are signals in your brain that are supposed to tell you, okay, you need to you know, breathe, you need to wake up. And sometimes those signals don't go well. So, and what people don't know is that if you live this way, over time, it's going to increase your risk for heart disease because your heart's constantly having to work overtime to make sure you get enough oxygen. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And then maybe it makes your heart work faster. And then if you do that over and over and over again, your risk for blood pressure problems go up. Your risk for congestive heart failure goes up. And of course, you're going to be tired all the time. So you're going to be drowsy. You won't be your best. And I think when you were on that stage, you were just like, I am not my best right now. I can't live this way. And I'm in front of these people. I'm on stage, literally on stage in front of people. And that's a scary moment. So I'm glad you made that decision real quick. What's has did the group continue? Are they still doing that work? Do they do you keep in touch with those guys? I was pretty much the heart and soul of it. I made the beats. I was I came up with the ideas. I was the mastermind, and um, yeah, they didn't have the same passion I did. I okay, did because uh, you know that all fizzled out. I still practice beats once in a while, um, but I don't do anything professionally anymore. Now okay. I am a family guy like Peter Griffin. Man, well, uh, I, I love, again, the impact. Music's very impact, impactful as well. Uh, and I but, had a lot of fun. I, I, wouldn't, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and not do it. I, I, That's I right. met a lot of great people. That's right. A lot of people I listened to, I, I got to work with them. So it was fun. But um, okay. I'm having way more fun being a, uh, being a father and a husband now. And, and those images in the background, so the group used to wear like uh, costume or makeup. Well, that's one of the group. That's in St. Clown Posse. I used to, you know, uh, do some work with them. But uh, my group, okay. you know, we never painted up. We just, uh, um, we just went out there and whatever and we just felt did like dressing. Yeah, and did okay, our, cool. It was like okay. a rap rock group, and we okay, had cool. guitars and st- kind of like Tech yeah. Nine's music. You know, yeah, you heard of him. He's he's yeah, big with that stuff. That's cool. I was listening. I was just I was exposing my kids to Kid Rock, which is kind of. Rap he country. Used to work with those guys. He's from Detroit. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's actually on their first album. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, news it was to a me. small world. Small world. I was just because they had never heard of Kid Rock. I said, no, nah, this guy's been doing this for a minute and he's, uh, you know, well known in the uh, community. So, okay, cool. So let me ask you this. So we, you know, we, we touched on irritable bowel, your weight, and we touched on sleep apnea. Of those, you know, what's, when it comes to your life changing, which one, fixing which one made the biggest impact on just life in general for you? You know, it's a tie between the the IBS and the sleep apnea. And I say that because um, every day the IBS just made me feel like mm, dirt. It yes. just, I never... It always felt like there was a, you know, you know, those taps they put in the trees to get the syrup to come out. I felt like that was my energy. It was a right. constant slow drip. And I never, I just, I never felt good. I never had energy. I was never truly me, but that never scared me. I, it, it annoyed me, mm-hmm. but it never scared me. I was afraid though with the sleep apnea, um, after you have those three experiences and I'm sure I had more moments in the night where my lungs stopped, but mm-hmm. they probably started back up and didn't wake mm-hmm. me up um, mm-hmm. unlike those three different times. And I, I do want to say to please don't be dumb like me. Use the CPAP machine. I did not use the machine. I literally said I'd rather die than use the machine. And that is wow. almost um, what happened. But uh, what, it, I, the sleep apnea was to me was a lot more scary because I actually started developing um, insomnia. I just, mm. I was so afraid to go to bed. I, cause I knew that if I was awake, I could control my breathing. Mm-hmm. I was like, if I'm alive, I'm awake, alive, awake, awake, alive. And I knew that as soon as I'd go to bed, uh, I was in God's hands. I was completely in God's hands. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know what his plans were. I don't know what the, what the date on the calendar is for me, you know? And I didn't, it made me nervous and I, I was so afraid to go to bed. I would try to stay up as long mm-hmm. as I could. I would just, I was so afraid to go to bed and I would, I would never 
try to sleep on my back because I was just terrified because those are the times I woke up and I couldn't breathe was when I was laying flat. So in my mind, I, I tried to sleep sitting up like on the couch and stuff. And I, I tried to do whatever I could that I would give me some peace to try mm-hmm. to get some sleep, even if it hurt my neck the next day and made me feel even worse. I said, well, at least I'm still alive. You know, I'd take a, a, a hurt, stiff neck rather than, that's right. Um, you know, walking around in a new existence yet. You know, one day I'll be there, but I, I'm not, I wasn't ready yet. So it was a tie, but um, I, the IBS was almost the best one to get rid of because it was life threatening and it yeah. scared the life out of me. But yeah. I'm appreciative of it though, because it gave me a new perspective on life. So um, yeah. I, I feel like sometimes the worst things that happen to us in life are um, set us up for the best things in life that could ever oh, yeah. happen to us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, encouraging people and spreading spreading um you you have a story like having a story to tell you're what's your age i just turned 34 this september it's hard to imagine Uh, i have a lot of seniors in my practice right so it just blows my mind and i've seen like one (laughs) well right and it's like you're just in your 30s man it's like and this that should not even be a thought to have to worry about these life and death issues and and, and it's just amazing. So that's why it's important that everybody start thinking about this as, you know, why you're young, because it can sneak up on you at a young age. And, but, but what, what, it, what, and I'm imagining, I'm not sure what kind of parent you were, what kind of husband you were when you were struggling. Uh, but I do want to speak to that a little bit. Um, I do feel that I'm more present um, because I have mental clarity. And because I can do this work, be a doctor, and still have something left in the tank to be a husband, to watch Netflix together or whatever we're doing. So I want to get a sense from you when you reflect back on who you were prior to making these changes, how has it impacted your parenting and how has it impacted you as being a great husband? Well, when I had most of these issues, it was it was before uh, my marriage and before my son. So I'm grateful that I wasn't, um, I didn't have them in my life at that point because I wasn't the best role model. I I wasn't the best version of me. Mm-hmm. And I think it's having those experiences have made me better because now I have a new perspective. I have a new love for life. And I think that's, it's made me a better husband. And I think it's, it's making me a better father, father, a better role model for my son to show him what a real man looks like as far as, um, core values and, Mm -hmm. and integrity and all these things and passion for life that I probably wouldn't have had, um, unless I've had these experiences. So as much as I, I didn't enjoy them at the time, I'm very grateful for them. You know, my coach taught me nothing's all bad, nothing's all good. That's the law mm-hmm. of clarity, the law of opposites. Yeah. And um, you just have to find the good in a bad situation because it's there, uh, but you have to look for it. And if you're not going to look for something, you'll never find it. Man, I love that. Now, I know you love your family. Uh, you love the carnivore community, but <clears throat> when you think about the carnivore diet. And I want to say this to my audience. Listen, I know we've had a lot of carnivore content lately. <laughs> I still, I'm still low carb keto carnivore in terms of the messaging. It's just that because I've met this wonderful community, it's compelled me to have conversations. So I'm not trying to indoctrinate people into carnivore. I think people who uh, reduce carbs. If you're at 300 carbs and you go to 100, I'm happy. If you're That's at 100, cool. you go to 50, I'm happy. And if you want to go further because you need to, I'm happy. So I just want to say that first. But what about what about this carnivore um, journey? Has what do you love the most about it? Um, because I know, again, it's been a game changer for me. But what about you? What I mean, we've talked about a few things. Anything else that comes to mind? You know. Uh- the healing properties of the diet, like the first 30 days I healed, I I had no more back pain. I had three discs in my back. They're out of alignment from a car accident. I have no more back pain. I've had, I'm on day like 127 and I've had two days where my back kind of hurt. Mm -hmm. So that, Mm -hmm. that basically went away. Um, the IBS went away in the first 30 days, that, that, that annoying feeling in your gut that you, 
constantly don't feel good. That went away in the first 30 days. My sleep apnea went away in the first 30 days. And I know people ask me, well, how do you know it went away? How do you know? I know because I had this wheeziness, like a whistle mm-hmm. in my lungs. And I don't know if it was, everything was inflamed in there um, and air was just squeaking by or I'm not sure, but I don't have that wheeziness, that whistle anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, and also too, I, I have complete confidence it's given me to go to mm-hmm. bed at night and um, to not just say a prayer to be woken up in the morning, but to say a prayer to thank you for giving me another day. And I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow. Right. It's given me so much confidence. Um, the diet, I feel like um, fear and anxiety, it comes from a lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And this diet really helped me learn about the right things to put in my body that make me feel the right way. And it's really eliminated a lot of that fear and anxiety I had on the other diet of, well, why is this stuff doing this to me? What am I doing wrong? What, what was the cause? I ate so much junk in a day. I couldn't pinpoint um, if it was all of it or, or a specific thing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this being like an elimination diet, I guess you could call it too. Um, that's really given me the confidence to excel in life and to, to, to wake up with confidence and to go to bed with confidence. So I, I it's a, it's a blessing. And my grandfather, he's 93 mm. and he's on keto. So I'm all about low carb cutting back and um, also low sugar. I know we always get on carbs, but sugar really is almost to me just so much more addictive than, than the carbs, you know, yeah. so low carb, low sugar, and uh, just, just try to do what's best for you folks. You know, it's, if, if it's carnivore, try it. If it's keto, try it. You have my full support. You have Dr. Tony's full support. It just, it's about this journey. We're all going through different things together, but we're all going through them together. And if we can lift each other up and, and encourage each other to live our best life, I think that's what's most important, whether it's keto or carnivore. A 93-year-old was inspired to do this? Yeah, he, he did carnivore first, but then he said he, he enjoys keto a little bit because he likes right. little things here and that's there. That's right. Well, I think a little things here and there is uh, totally acceptable. Uh, and he's and 93. Was- How can I tell him he's not doing something right? I mean... Yeah, we need to sit down and let him do the damn podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, seriously, that's amazing. What about, like, when I think about, this is not a question, it's a statement. So I I see a lot of people doing, like, 30-day challenges, like the steak and butter gal, right? But Bella, so, but it makes sense because, I mean, people suffer from obstructive sleep apnea for years. And 30 days later, it feels like it's gone. People suffer from irritable bowel, which we both suffered from. For years. For years. And they think that's just their destiny, man. 30 days later, that's gone? It's depressing to think that that's that's how you're going to feel the rest of your life. It really is. It does add on your your mental health in a a bad way because- you know, you have start having dark thoughts. Then it's like, man, am I going to feel like crap every day? Like, is this worth? That's right. Being here, and I want to tell you guys that if you're in that spot, it is worth being here. You guys just have mm-hmm. to, you know. And I do agree with the doctors at some point when they said it was in my head. They just didn't say it the right way. Right. It was in That's my right. thinking. It was in my mind, and it was also in my body because my thinking, my mind, uh, that led to an unhealthy body. So it was a combination of both. There was something wrong um, with my body, but it also did stem. Um, the root cause was was from my mind, my thinking. And um, a lot of doctors treat symptoms. And uh, luckily, we have Dr. Tony here who's focused on getting down to the root cause. You know, he's like a That's right. um, God's gift gardener here for us. And he's getting down there and he's pulling out the roots. And Part of the root cause for me was my mindset, was my thinking, and it led to me making bad decisions. And I had to go back to the law of polarity. What's the opposite of beer? It's Mm -hmm. water. What's Mm -hmm. the opposite of all these sweets? It's it's a nice ribeye. Mm -hmm. And if we would just focus on our thinking and our body, we could heal both at the same time. And it's not just one or the other. It's not just like change your diet and you're also going to do great. You will do better, but you also need to focus on your thinking because if you're not making those proper decisions, you're going to sabotage your diet and, and, and your health. So I feel like they they go hand in hand. Um, you need them both. Man, you're killing me today, man. I feel like I went to church right now. So <laughs> listen, 
Uh, and I know you're a spiritual brother, but if people people will question and say, "Man, I um, I don't think I have the discipline to do this," but when you think about what JT is saying today, uh, it's easy to have discipline. First of all, if you've had irritable bowel, and you don't want to have it again, uh, if you couldn't go to sleep, or should I say, were afraid to go to sleep, you would have discipline. If you benefited and got mental clarity so you can sit down with your beautiful child and share their experiences and teach them how to be uh, a young man and a future man, you you would have discipline. If you if you thought about what you're able to bring to your family beyond the baby with your wife and the and the community that we're serving right now, having the energy to get up in the morning to record this episode you would have discipline. So we feel for you for not having had discipline in the past, but I promise you when you can see the beauty of a life of healing, a life where you feel good every day, you're not trying to find a bathroom, where is it going to be located every day, it'll it'll get there. And it may be a different inspiration, different things that each individual has to use, but being healthy is priceless. And I heard someone, um, I'm not sure if it was Carrie or someone talking about, I think it was Carrie of Homestead Howe talking about he would take this diet and they can write a check for a billion dollars right now. And he said they can keep the money. And people think people are crazy to make such a statement. But if you mean to tell me I would have a life of illness with all the money in the world, I would definitely not choose that over having more humble uh, resources and feeling like a million dollars. I had recovered recently from <clears throat> an upper, I still got it. And uh, my wife's like, why do you keep doing all these recordings when you can barely talk? I said, I got to do it. But Six weeks ago, I caught something. It wasn't the things that you can diagnose. I just, whatever it was, bronchitis or whatever. And I just, because I wasn't feeling like Tony, I, I couldn't give my patients in clinic the experience they wanted. But, but now that I'm getting back to what is normal for me, I, I wake up like a lion, man. I wake up so fired up. I, even if it's just doing work on a computer or, or coaching somebody, I just love, so man, I'm gonna tell you, people, I just hope people hear us today and say, give it a chance. Do a 30 day challenge. Give yourself that chance. Now, you know, what helped you, I just want to uh, piggyback off what you're talking about. What helped you when you didn't feel good to keep keep going on, like what your wife was like, why are you doing it? Um, there's secret sauce to the discipline. And I just want to touch on two things that are in the secret sauce. One of them was you were reminding yourself of what you're fighting for and how important it is. And that, that helps you gain momentum for your discipline mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And then also another one is you kind of talked about it. You know, you're like when you, when you don't feel as crappy as you did, that's gratitude. And the best way to mm. tap into gratitude is when you remember, remind yourself of your old self that, that felt like crap, that didn't feel good, that was afraid to go to bed. And that's what I do. And remind myself that there was a version of me that didn't have the awareness that I have now. It, I didn't understand that my thinking and my diet went together. And now that I do that awareness, it's, it's, it's given me the gratitude. I'm, I'm so able to, and that's the best way to tap into gratitude is just remind yourself of the old version of you that had low awareness. And now the new version of you that's, that's got this awareness that's doing better. Mm -hmm. And those are the awareness and what you're fighting for, whether it's your family, your, your kids, your wife, your wife's health, um, remind yourself what you're fighting for and remind yourself of your old self and you're going to be tapped into gratitude and um, the discipline is just going to be through the roof. You're going to have so much fuel. These are um, principles of success. I don't believe that success is accidental. Sometimes you struggle and didn't expect to struggle, but success is not, you know, when we talked about sports earlier and we talked about Giannis and um, Damian Lillard, even though I call them Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, you know, Damian 
being essentially Steph Curry. And if Steph Curry didn't exist, he'd be the best shooter in the NBA. It's not an accident. So I just want anything you would share about keys to success, like any other principles that you think would be helpful. Absolutely. You know, I'm glad you brought them up. Um, pro athletes, uh, like a, a person who's got that shot. How, how did he get so deadly at that shot? Mm. Rep- repetition. Repetition. Um, you know, that's that's the discipline then that comes back in for repetition. They have the discipline uh, to keep doing the same shot over and over and over. And Bruce Lee said he wasn't worried about his opponent that practiced a lot. He was worried about his opponent that practiced one move a lot. Mm. Because that one move could just destroy him. That's all a, it takes. That's all it takes, folks. And and that really is all it takes. It takes repetition. So you're not going to know about the health benefits until you give this a try. For That's why we say to do, try 30 days. And if 30 days sounds too daunting, try seven days. Be repetitious for seven days. But get into that mindset, that flow, that repetition is actually a good thing. That's a good repetition is the first law of learning. That's mm-hmm. how we learn things. You know, they, they go over the ABCs so many times when you're little. Um, that's how we learn. And we need to go over this information, um, go over coaching. And another thing I think is help people is the tapping into your core values. And uh, for me, core values are like family. I have a couple ri- written down. Uh, integrity. You know, um, becoming a person of value that's that, mm. that's involved. Um, doing what you say you're going to do, you know, mm-hmm. being a person of integrity, responsibility, not making excuses. And what I mean by that is like, I realized that I was the one causing my health problems. It was my decisions. I, mm. I had no other excuse, but, but it was me. Um, a third one would be always being your best. Mm-hmm. Always, you know, um, like you said, uh, you didn't feel good, but you you reminded of what you were fighting for and it, it keeps you at your best and um you never settle for being average never settle mm-hmm. for feeling like crap um always be seeking for for the answer and and if you're seeking you will find it says that seek and ye will find you will mm-hmm. and the last one i could say too is uh being servant driven um when you find out what works please spread spread that please spread it be servant driven um Give, give back more than what you got, you know, give and don't ask uh, to get anything in return. So, you know, give out the information, you know, try to tell people about low carb, uh, try to tell them about keto and carnivore, give back because now you're getting um, benefits from these diets. And I feel it's important to spread that and help other people um, lift them up and help them feel exactly the way you're feeling. So, you know, and, and practice excellence, you know, when you're being servant driven. So when you do what you say you're going to do, you have that integrity. But the excellence is seeing excellence is seeing something to full completion. Mm. And be excellent for yourself, too, and your family. But excellent for yourself meaning see to completion. See, get all the knowledge, you know, eliminate the fears and see, see your healing to completion because you can do it. So those core values are going to drive you and they're going to they're going to make your life more beautiful than you ever could have imagined. Well, your um, expression of an answer to this question is the exact reason why your YouTube channel is valuable. <clears throat> so for those who hear your voice today, this is what you'll get on this young man's, I'm going to call you young man because I'm 55, his YouTube channel. <laughs> and You're I young, really. Man. Well, I'm working. I'm 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 going to embrace that. And I, I and every time I don't say I'm young, my wife does exactly what she said. No, nah, you're young. Don't even go there. Especially but, you found the right diet, man. You're going to live man, a long time woo, now. Man, I'm we 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 doing our thing now. One thing I want to say, I as I listen to you, I I realized that in those moments when I was living my why, and I was on the stage, I was actually feeling some kind of way during Keto Palooza. Um, and I was very concerned that I wouldn't be able to get on that stage and and not be disrupted by a cough or so my wife with her love, she gave me a little coffee and I drink coffee sometimes. Right before I got on the stage, I was feeling like coughing the whole time before I got on the stage. 
<clears throat> and I even felt like coughing and did cough after I got off the stage. <clears throat> but I promise you, when I was on that stage, some people who follow us are spiritual. Some people follow the universe. Something was holding on to me and allowing me to do what I had to do. And when I recorded all those episodes and you know live streams and things that you've participated in some of that over the last month, during the live stream, you wouldn't know. I, I mean, my voice may, I may sound like Barry White, practice what you preach. <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to do that work. And it was, and then immediately after I finished, I would walk away and then I would start coughing. I'm like, what? In the, so I'm telling you, I don't know if it's adrenaline, but I'm going to give it to something spiritual, the universe, depending on a person's preference. And I just really appreciate that because. I explain some of that for you. Give me some of it, man. Um, well, part of it, yeah, it's your it's your spiritual, you know, um, it's it's the Lord being with you, giving you power. But there's also something called the luminal space. Mm -hmm. And a lot of performers, when they go on stage, you ever see like these these American Idol shows, you know, and someone just goes out there and they're telling them, hey, you got to look this direction for the camera right. and stand here. And they just forget about all that. And they just let go. And that's called the luminal space. And the luminal mm -hmm. space is the space between two ideas. That's where we get the word subliminal from. Mm. And let's say that someone out there thought that the world was flat and I convinced them that the world was round. When they let go of the, the idea of it being flat and then they go towards it being round, there's a space in between there. And that space, that luminal space, that's where the magic happens. That's where the magic happens to get you um, to, to build your new ideas and to grow. And that's how they attach to the new idea. They had to go through the luminal space. They had to go through that magical little space. And that's, that's really what a guy like you, who's an elite performer out there, the elite performers tap into the luminal space. And it's a, it's a gift from God to just be able to let go, let it flow. And then you said you started coughing again afterward because you were, you were back down, uh, mm -hmm. you were back out of the luminal space and uh, that happens sometimes, but that luminal space there is where a lot of magic happens. Man, so let me say this, um, that is wonderful. It's a nice nugget for all those who are checking us out, look that up, learn more about it. Um, and my question to you is, is this something you've learned on your own or did you, because I know you got, you mentioned your coach earlier and I know coaching is so helpful. It's helpful in your relationship. It's helpful in leadership or in a work environment. It's just helpful to help you follow through with life skills that you're trying to follow through with and, and your vision. So talk to me a little bit about, um, is that where you, even if it's not where, I got to hear some about your perspective on coaching. Cause I, 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 when I, you're a man, you just seem wise beyond your, your, your years. And I just want to hear where is that coming from coaching or somewhere else? Well, when I, when I talk about my coach, people think, uh, what are you talking about? Your football coach? Absolutely right. not. No, no. <laughs> I'm talking, I had a personal development coach. Um, you know, when I got out of the music business, I looked back and I said, man, I did a lot of things really, really well. And I also did a lot of things wrong, which is why I had a lot of issues. I had a lot of problems. And I wanted to find someone who could pinpoint what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong. That way I could nip in the bud what I was doing wrong and, and start excelling, start succeeding, start um, being a better man, being being a better example Um so coaching is everything. Everybody should have a coach. There's nothing wrong with being coached. It's it's getting specialized knowledge that's intelligently directed. And mm -hmm. that's going to help you more than someone who's being misleading, obviously. You know, and being coaching around too is if you ever forget who you are and can't see who you are, they're there the, to lift you up and remind you who you are. And getting coached, it, it helped me not get discouraged, you know, and a lot of us, you know, none of us are dumb. None of us are really lazy, but when we get discouraged, that's the best way for the devil to win. In my opinion, um, he just has to get you discouraged. He has to just get you discouraged. So you just give up and stop trying. 
And I, I almost did that in life, and I'm I'm glad I didn't. And when I when I found my coach, it helped lift me up and 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 eliminate those fears, give me knowledge, and that takes away the the courage. And um, if there's nothing else to be taken out of this, to to get get a coach and help yourself make good decisions. Um, there's there's nothing wrong with being coached. Like I said, it, it's a beautiful thing. You you want to grow. You want to keep stretching. And mm-hmm. if you don't keep stretching, keep keep an open mind. Uh, we're never going to grow into the best version of ourselves. <laughs> and you want to learn about core values. You want to learn about who you are and how your mind works. And um, that's what I did. I wanted to learn. I woke up an hour early every day for a year when I first got my son. It, he was it was the toughest time of my life, but I woke up an hour early every day and studied the mind and I wanted to learn. I wanted to do better and it mm. was the toughest year of my life, but I learned so much in that, that year. And, you know, you, you mentioned being wise beyond my years. I appreciate that, but it's an awareness. And it's like when you learn the difference between your mom and your dad, you're never going to forget that. And mm-hmm. when you gain an awareness on how your mind works, that there's a paradigm in there. It's a program. It's like a Windows 95 and it's old and outdated. The old way I was thinking, you know, drinking, smoking, that was my Windows 95. And I had to upgrade to the upgrade to the new Apple software, you know, to, to the smart software. And you're you're gonna be clicking and operating at a different frequency. And mm. whatever vibration you're in, you're gonna attract those things. So if you're if you're feeling like crap and you're in a low vibration, that's what it is. When someone says they're not feeling good, they're they're unconsciously talking about what vibration they're in. Mm. And when you're in a low vibration, you attract low vibration things. You attract low vibration thoughts. So when I didn't feel well, I attracted low vibration thoughts. I thought anxiety and depression. I, I thought bad thoughts. Mm-hmm. That's what I, vibration I was in. And getting into this diet and getting coaching helped raise my vibration. And now I'm attracting um, people who not only are in the same vibe, you know, not want to, people not only that want to be in that same vibration, but people who like you are in that vibration. And you guys can attract these things into your life just by focusing on yourself going inside, not, not the five senses, which you see here, smell, taste, touch. We have to go inside and use our higher faculties, our willpower and uh, our perception when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change <laughs> so it's like the carnivore diet you know and, and keto people think well you can't you can't just eat that way well if you actually did some research and looked at it and and um it would help change the way you look at things and then everything you look at changes and your whole life changes if you could just work on one thing that i'm talking about just work on your perspective you know like i I have a new perspective having a near-death experience. If you could just change your perspective, gosh, you would change your entire life, folks, if you just worked at one of your higher faculties. And the five senses, tapping into those is what got me to the dance. That's what got me in trouble. Oh, man, that looks good. That smells good. You know, that tastes good. That That is shallow thinking, and that leads you to a short life. We want we want long term success. We want longevity. Um, that that requires going inside and and using the higher faculties. One of them is also your willpower. We all have the will. You know, Doctor Warner von Braun. He was talking with Doctor. I mean, uh, President Kennedy. And President Kennedy says, "What would it take to get a man to the moon and back safely?" Mm-hmm. Von Braun said, "The will to do it." Mm. He didn't say seven trillion dollars. He didn't say, "Oh, we need a bunch of smart people." He said the will to do it and the will to the will is your ability to hold one idea on the screen of your mind until it it becomes reality. And so I I encourage you guys to use your willpower with your health. Picture yourself doing well. Picture yourself gathering this information and becoming more confident, becoming more healthy. And you hold that on your mind. You're going to get that exactly. You just have to use your higher faculties, folks, and, and use those five senses a little less. So, um, (laughs) you know, when I think about what you've just done, um, you have a coach, but I think you're coaching our audience today. 
you're also coaching Dr. Tony because um, we learn so much from each other. And you never get tired of hearing these types of messages just to remind us how wonderfully made we all are and how we all have a contribution to make. So if I can be coached and coaching can accelerate my progression towards my, my, my why, and I can focus on that why, and I can have awareness of that why, um, that's going to allow me to know where I am today and what I need to do to get to my goal. And I just love, I, if, if politicians were not influenced by lobbyists and special interests and they had a why, and they had the political will to walk towards that why, the world would be a better place. So that's why I appreciate everything you're saying today. And I felt like you coached us today. And that's why I said you were wiser than your years because I've done, you know, this is episode 172 or whatever it is. And um, not often do you get in front of people who can in just their commentary, in their statements, coach us. And I hope that every episode does this, but I particularly want to call out this episode as an episode that's going to do just that. So I hope as many people as possible got to the end of this episode so that they can get all of this positive energy that you have brought to this episode. And um, so I want to ask you um, any final coaching thoughts or tips you want to share with the audience, think something else because you've shared so much, anything else you want to say that would inspire those who are listening to this episode? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, if you guys want to be a coach yourself and you want to uh, lift someone out, uh, lift someone else up, the best way to do that is to help them find out what they're fighting for. That is the best way to just encourage someone and help them motivate somebody. So you don't have to be a guru or anything like that. If you just sit down and if someone's in your life that's having a bad time, help them figure out what they're fighting for. And I guarantee you, you're going to be just as impactful, if not more impactful than I ever could be in their life. Mm. And you can do that. We all can do that. Uh, we're all made in God's image. We're all creative beings. We all have the ability to come up with these thoughts and to, to serve people and to give back. So if we help people find out what they're fighting for, you know, like you said, what's your why? That is going to help people the most. So I want to encourage people to not just sit back and look at me and say, wow, you know, that he's smart. You're smart, too. Uh, you can do the same things. You just have to focus on helping people find what they're fighting for. And that's be a great way that you can give back to the people directly in your life. Even if you just cut a video on your YouTube channel and just say, you know, what are you fighting for? Help people go inside themselves. And that goes back to find your, your inside, you know, figure out what's going on in here and what you could do to change. And that's going to change everything in your life. Nice. And, and one of the things that we're both fighting for is to at least create awareness that one of the dietary patterns you should consider is carnivore. We're also supporting uh, low carb and keto and ketovore. So, Part of that, and I know I'll be meeting you in a couple of weeks to shake your hand and meet your wife, as I mentioned earlier, is to support the carnivore, uh, you know, diet movie. So talk to the audience about how they can support that, because if we don't balance the messaging, there are so many people who will never even consider this. And they'll never heal in a way that they could have. So share a little bit about how they can support that. If you guys want to support the carnivore diet documentary that's going on, uh, or the carnivore diet movie, as, as it's also been called, uh, there's no official name for it yet, but you can go to www.carnivoredietmovie.com. There's all sorts of great info, great videos to watch. And there's also a little spot for the GoFundMe. You can, even if it's just a dollar, um, that's, you get you get back what you send out, the energy you send out, you know, and I yeah. would encourage people, even if it's a dollar, 50 cents, 20 That's cents, right. whatever. Um, if you could 
send that to a good cause because you might not see who that that dollar impacts, but that just the fact that you're sending out that good energy, that positivity, it will be received by the universe. It will go to a good cause. Mm. And this documentary is what it's going to do is like what I talked about earlier. It's going to help raise people's awareness. It's going to give them a new set of knowledge. Um, and it's going to eliminate a lot of anxiety and fear that people mm-hmm. have, That's especially right. with thinking about, well, this might be unhealthy um, or the anxiety and um, depression they have about what they're experiencing. And, mm-hmm. and it's going to help lift them up and know that there is an answer out there. There, There is something they can do. And uh, these people who are seeing it were probably seeking the answer and seek and ye shall find. Mm. And we want to help get this documentary out there to help those people um, that maybe aren't seeking as hard, but they're still seeking and um, it does, they deserve to find the answer. So if you guys could go on there and maybe uh, consider donating to the, uh, the GoFundMe um, or if Carrie from Homestead Hall is doing a live stream, you can send a super chat. But uh, YouTube does take about 30% of that. So uh, it goes a little bit farther on the GoFundMe. Or you could purchase one of the shirts from his spread shop. All that money does go to the Carnivore Diet documentary. Um, get yourself a nice compassionate Carnivore t-shirt. Um, get, get a t-shirt that, that's going to help you um, bring up a conversation with somebody if they say, hey, what's on your t-shirt? And it's a great way to not only spread the uh, keto and carnivore message, you know, um, about good health, but it's also a great way to support that documentary, which ultimately will spread to the entire world. The, the Everybody from, from America to Africa, everybody is watching Netflix mm-hmm. and uh, Hulu and all these apps. Like um, I interviewed a couple guys from South America or South Africa, and um, they said that uh, they said, JT, I hope you know that uh, American entertainment is the world's entertainment. Hmm. You know, what, the, we watch the movies, the movies you guys make. They watch wow. Netflix. They watch. We have to remind ourselves of not only who we are as people, but who we are as, as a country, that we are leaders out here. We're a beacon of light to a very dark world. And we need to remember hmm. the power we have as as Americans here. So donating a dollar to a documentary that's going to go on Netflix and everybody's going to see even out in South Africa. That's so important. So just remember the power you have and the power in a decision. Uh, Decisions are the most powerful thing we have. You know, look, you made a decision to marry your wife and there's kids that come out of it and houses and cars and it, all that stuff came from one decision, the power of one decision. And they're going to have kids, your kids, kids will have kids and they'll have kids and it all came down from your one decision. That's it. Marry that woman. Mm. And, and look at the impact you're going to have on the world from here on out by making your one decision. So I want to just remind people of the power they have. It might feel like a dollar and it might feel um, just like a decision. But, you know, um, I go back to the saying, little did you know, you know, and also, too, you had that cut on your hand. Mm-hmm. Little That's did- right. Little did he know that something so small like that um, yeah. would lead to such a big impact on the right world. There, yeah, yeah. That and cut on his hand uh, led him to want to be a doctor and to help that's people. It. That's so, it. That's it. Um, you might not know when something huge is happening because you forget about the power that you have. So little do you know that um, probably the biggest impact you ever could make would become from one of the smallest things you could ever do, which is like that's donating right. a buck or you know, uh, becoming a doctor because of that's right. Head. That's <laughs> right. Thank you. Dude, for it's that. beautiful, man. It really is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's nice to pause and, uh, put these things in perspective and, um, uh, pausing and being grateful as you've mentioned as well. Those are golden, uh, concepts to not minimize. So thank you so much. And, and you and found again, the good in that cut, man, you know, I found that. That's right. There. That's the law of polarity. Nothing's all good. Nothing's all bad. You focused on what was good as a child. You were kids are literally natural born geniuses. And you mm-hmm. were at that moment and you said, wow, your mind, you're you're an, you're a natural at this, man. Your mind went right towards what's the positive in this situation. That's right. That's and you not right. only found it, but you took that ball and you ran with it. So God ran bless with you, it. Dr. Tony, you're a great man. 
you're mm. you're a gladiator and we're glad to have you fighting for us we really well, are i'll i'll put my armor on and keep it on uh and i appreciate that that's my favorite movie gladiator just so you know <laughs> so um let's let's wrap up with you sharing um how you hope to protect your nest we know you're obviously doing diet but what other aspects of my my acronym my nest and rope stress sleep how you think exercise, uh, relationships, uh, avoiding organisms and pollutants that harm you, emotions, life experiences, recovering from trauma. What, where are you going to give a little extra love and attention over the next year? Well, we could start with the end, the nutrition. Um, I'm going to keep focusing on eating the stuff that I don't get bad reactions from. You know, I'm going to eat everything that that doesn't make my gut feel terrible again. Cause I don't want to feel like that. And that goes back to um, using the law of perspective. Yeah. I'm going back and remembering how crappy I felt and, and how, how down I was and how, how lifted up I am and how good I feel. So I'm going to focus, keep focusing on my nutrition. Uh, you've got exercise on there for the E uh, exercise is great. I'm going to, I just bought jump ropes. Um, so I'm jump roping and, I really want to add that in there, and I want to also to um, add in some more sit ups and stuff. So I'm going to be mm-hmm. focused on uh, once I get down to my goal weight, which I'm very close to. I want to start focusing on building some muscle mass, especially mm-hmm. uh, around my butt area, because I I sit right on the tailbone these days. Uh, I have no more ass anymore, so um, I'm going to focus on that um, S and nest. Uh, less stress, more sleep. Gosh, am I so glad! to have less stress and more sleep because I can <laughs> I actually go it. to bed now with no sleep apnea. So I'm going to stay focused on how good it feels to go to bed without fear. Um, that's, and I'm going to keep getting that good rest. Um, the T and nest, um, how you think, um, less trauma. I'm going to keep studying. I'm going to keep stretching. I'm going to keep, that's the beautiful thing about awareness. There's always somebody more aware than you. So you can always keep learning. And that's mm-hmm. the benefit of getting coached. We go back to that. Like it's all in our awareness, you know, and um, I can't take my hats with me, my glasses. I can't take my phone, my computer when I'm dead. But what I can take, what we all can take is our awareness. Nobody mm-hmm. can ever take your awareness from you, what you've learned and what you've got in your heart. Mm-hmm. That will be with you forever. So I, I suggest that we keep stretching and doing that. Um, so in relationships, all that stuff, I, I'm going to keep focusing on, serving people. That's the best way for me to grow my relationships um, is to be a servant, to, to give to you guys more than I get back. And, Mm -hmm. and I feel like when you are a person of value, people are going to want to be in your life. And if anybody's lonely out there, a good thing to do is um, when you're lonely and you don't have many people, that's because you're focused on yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. And the best way to become not lonely and to gain friends is to focus on other people. You know, um, pr- pretend they have a MMFI on their forehead. Make me feel important. Mm. Uh, listen to them. Hear them out. And when you pay attention to somebody, uh, they pay attention to you. When you become interested in somebody, you become interesting to them. Mm. So I, I, do you want me to go through the rest of the acronyms or... Ooh. I'm telling you, I can do... Uh, yeah, you better or- keep keep going, man. I'm loving everything. Yeah, organism, avoiding a bad, adding the good. Um, yes, that's that's what you want to do. That's part of coaching, you know. Um, gain good knowledge, eliminate the fears, folks. That way you can make better decisions. So, hmm. um, you know, definitely go for the soda instead of the, the water. Organize your thoughts. Um, uh, to order is the first law of heaven. That's the, that's heaven's first law is order. <laughs> Otherwise, hell is chaos. So we don't want that. Um, pollutants. Um, try to keep the junk out of your life, you know. Um, and I, I mentioned cannabis earlier. I have nothing against it. If you have like a terminal illness and it's really one of the only things yeah. that's being, bringing you relief or and um, some joy, please, by all means, mm-hmm. um, do what's best for you. But if, if you're if you're a healthy young person and you really don't need some of these things in your life, then please um, stay away from it. And, and pollutants don't have to just be stuff we can uh, consume. They don't mm-hmm. have to be drugs. Um, our, our minds are like sponges, just like our bodies. You know, if you touch a handle and someone who touched peanuts before touches it, 
you don't even have to eat the peanuts and you can get allergic reaction. Your mind is the same way. So if you're watching junk, um, you're watching news and you're getting all upset about that, that's a pollutant to your mind and, and you really mm. don't need it. And the last mm. one is E, emotions and experiences. I want you guys to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. People don't like that emotion. They And I talk about riding the tiger. It's on my cup here, riding the tiger. Mm -hmm. um, it's That's about being nervous, being scared of your goal. If you make a goal that's big enough, it should make you nervous. It should make you scared. If you actually, if I put you in a, a tiger cage and told you to walk up and pet them, I'm sure your legs would be shaking. You'd have some anxiety. You'd have some nervousness. But when you pet that tiger and you show no fear, I guarantee you that tiger is going to respect you back. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get on that tiger and you're going to ride the tiger. And in, what I mean by that is you're going to go after your goal. And you don't want to look back and say, man, what if I would have done that? What if I would have tried carnivore? How good could I have felt? You know what? I would have felt better embrace those nervousness, you know, um, and you can get rid of some of it with, with knowledge, you know, but in, if you're still feeling fear, whatever your goal is, go for it, ride the tiger and have the ride of your life. And you don't want to look back at the end of life with regrets and say, man, I wish I could have done that. Or what, it, what, it, what would have been like, had I done that? Had I tried keto? Had I tried carnivore? Don't look back with regrets folks. Um, Cause when you're laying there in, in, in the old folks home and you can't even get out of a wheelchair, um, you know, the only thing you'll have left is your memories, your awareness. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be tortured with regrets. You want to look back and say, wow, I remember I, even if you lose, losing can still be fun. Um, think about the Super Bowl. One team's got to win, one team's got to lose, but both teams, they're, they're, they're getting media coverage and photos mm -hmm. and they're trying on the Super Bowl ring. And it's so much fun to even the losing team. So even if you lose, um, losing, losing big enough can be fun. And there's nothing wrong with failure. Failure is just data. Um, Edison made the light bulb wrong 4,000 different times before you got it right. And someone was like, well, you made it 4,000. Uh, you made 4,000 mistakes. And he says, no, I, f I found out 4,000 different ways to not make the light bulb. So use your, your failures as data because that's really what they are. You say, OK, well, I won't do that again. And then bless your obstacles as stepping stones, folks, because um, when you do that, they lift you up and you can overcome them and then you'll be on a different level. So I hope some of that has helped you guys. All of it is uh, wonderful. And um, so many, it, whenever I hear uh, people speak to the nest and rope acronym, it's always good to kind of, you know, see it through another person's lens. So it was nice to hear that. Off perspective. Yeah, perspective, man. So I really enjoyed every moment. Uh, don't even want it to end. I'm looking forward to uh, shaking your hand. I'm looking forward to doing more work. Just text being, me. I'll coach you anytime you need it, man. man anytime you need it's some, a beautiful thing. some encouragement, just hit me man, up. We, man, I love that. So I thank you so much. And And when people are trying to find you. Of course, we mentioned uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, so we want to mention that again, the Poco Moonshine family YouTube channel. But any other ways to reach you in the social media space? Yeah, I have a podcast chatting with carnivores. And I love sharing people's stories because Carrie sharing his story um, helped me find a new way of eating and a, and a better life. And I it's literally my passion now to help others share their story. So somebody out there can um, change their life for the better. So I'm booking, if you want, would like to be on chatting with carnivores, um, you would, you would type in the Poco moonshine family on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I'm booking people for the show. So just send me a message uh, or you could email me Poco moonshine family at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to help you share your story. Um, it, it gets it off their chest and it helps others relate, and uh, it helps me uh, feel like I'm I'm serving and giving back. So it's a win, 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 and I'd love mm -hmm. to help you guys win. So the Poco Moonshine family, look me up and um, come holler at me. I I'd love to help you out. Well, you hollered at us today, and I appreciate it. Um, really happy we met and had a chance to connect and. And, and again, a lot of nuggets on this episode, a lot of inspiration, a lot of coaching. 
So I know you're going to be heading back to the family uh, after recording, getting ready to do some uh, Halloween-related activities, virtual hug to your wife and your child, uh, hoping you guys have a wonderful celebratory. For those, I know everybody doesn't celebrate Halloween. I just want the babies to have fun. So yeah, yep. I'm and I okay. do have one question for you. Yes, um, sir. It was a, it's a carnivore uh, keto related question. Yes, be um, happy. Yes, um, this was something that was it was a concern of mine when I first heard about it. Okay, folks, and I wanted to bring it up here because this is the right guy to talk to, and then we can you can end it whenever you want. Um, I was reading that the high ketone levels can make your blood acidic and um, a, con- a serious condition could be had called ketidosis. Mm-hmm. And sometimes um, you could develop diabetes called diabetic ketidosis. And I was worried at first when I heard that, that if being in ketosis too long could give me a diabetic version of, of um, you know, a diabetic ketidosis. And could you ad- just uh, eliminate some of our fears and give us some knowledge on that? Yeah. And what's ironic about your question is this is not a lay person's question. Sometimes the doctors get it wrong um, and it drives us crazy in a low carb space because if you're going to have honest discussion about keto flu, you may get a headache, you may feel fatigued. We're okay with that. We also call keto flu carb withdrawal. But when you start making statements that are falsities. It makes us, you know, feel sad that people would, particularly doctors who have training, who have treated people in the hospital for diabetic ketoacidosis. And then they think that nutritional ketosis is the same. So when it comes to nutritional ketosis, when we think of the term ketosis, we think about our body, uh, you know, transitioning from burning, uh, you know, glucose for fuel to burning ketones, ketones for fuel. It's kind of a survival mechanism. In other words, if I'm fasting, uh, I need to get energy from somewhere. So I break down fat and it turns into ketones. And that's a, a great source of fuel in that setting. If I am like Professor Tim Noakes when he was running marathons and I do extreme exercise, sometimes I also will have ketones in that setting. But the bottom line is if you don't have enough carbs, which turns into sugar, which is basically glucose, you may go into uh, ketosis. Um, But, and, and, and just as a general rule, if you are less than about 50 carbs a day, that's when you're more likely to go into uh, ketosis where you're burning fat for fuel. Um, and But if you're less than 20 carbs a day, you're almost guaranteed. So us living in this uh, carnivore space, we tend to do it. But, but the key is ketosis, which is nutritional ketosis, is not the same as ketoacidosis, which we see in people with diabetes. Um, you will have ketones in your body when you're in nutritional ketosis, but it's at a low level. It won't be at a high enough level to cause harm. Uh, In fact, it's almost impossible for that to happen. Uh, This is a normal process. Whenever you're fasting, babies live in ketosis when they're little because they're just eating fat, basically. Breast milk is basically fat. So they're constantly and ketosis. So if it's good for the babies, it's good for Dr. Hampton and JT, right? And and again, it's normal to see it in low carb or keto and even carnivore. Ketoacidosis is imagine a person with diabetes <clears throat> that's that's not their, their sugar is super high and they don't have enough insulin to address that high sugar. Their ketone levels uh, will get high, but not just high toxically high, so high that it makes your blood turn acidic. And if untreated, you can die. And and in fact, when people are in diabetic ketoacidosis, they will find themselves probably in the ICU because as you try to add insulin back, you have to be very careful that you don't uh, have 
uh, an imbalance of electrolytes, particularly potassium. And if you don't do it right, even while you're treating somebody, it can actually uh, harm that person. Uh, so, so the main message as I answer your question is they're not the same. Now, there's one caveat to this, and the caveat is that there is there's there's this GL there's drugs that um, and that allow you to spill sugar out of your urine to treat diabetes. There dr- drugs like Jardius. Um, those drugs which allow you to spill out sugar into your urine can potentially increase the risk for something called euglycemic ketoacidosis that will occur in a person who's doing a keto diet and taking a medicine like that. So I typically uh, try to, although you can do it, I typically discourage patients who are taking those drugs, which are highly like recommended these days. People are recommending them, especially to cardiologists and endocrinologists because they think it's good for you know, heart disease. And it's, you know, it also treats diabetes. I would prefer you not eat this glucose instead of taking a drug that makes you urinate out the glucose. And I certainly don't want my patients to be at risk for this euglycemic ketoacidosis. But, but in general, I want people to walk away from this question knowing that if you're on keto, low carb, or carnivore, and you're just, and you're not taking medicines like that, you shouldn't have to think twice about this ketosis issue and I wouldn't worry about it at all. So that's so doing that's, carnivore and keto. It won't make you a, a keto a diabetic. You know, you won't. Not at all. Diabetes. It does. It does the opposite. It the the best diet for diabetes is keto, low carbon carnivore. So the diet that the misinformation is suggesting is the diet that you cure it with. You maybe I shouldn't say cure. You reverse it. You put it into remission. So it's it's almost laughable that the misinformation is still out there. It's basic biochemistry, and and I, and again, my my doctor colleagues who don't have nutritional training may not understand this, but but before you spew out untruths, please at least take a moment to open up a biochemical book, biochemistry book, and just review it before you tell a patient. Keto is going to make them go into ketoacidosis. That's just falsities. And it breaks my heart that these very intelligent, highly trained doctors don't pause for a moment and, and ask, how can you have millions of people in this dietary pattern? You haven't seen one come into the hospital because of their diet. I want to meet that person when they come into the hospital, unless they're taking these medicines. Right. So that's how I see it. So thank you for that question. You became the interviewer. <laughs> I became the interviewee. So thank you so much. And again, as I wrap up, I want to, again, thank you for you know spending some time with me today. And I, I, I feel blessed by it. I, I, I really do. Well, you are blessed and uh, you're, you're a great person and you're, you're a gladiator and you're doing, you're doing great work. And uh, I appreciate you. And I'm sure everybody watching appreciates you too. Absolutely. And, and I definitely appreciate everybody checking us out. And guys, we met a, a great person today, uh, a guest who healed from some lifestyle challenges. It was his gut, like Dr. Hampton. I didn't have sleep apnea, but he overcame that. And of course, he lost a few pounds along the way. Got his got his sexy back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, Justin Timberlake, man. That's, you better <laughs> know it. Right you better know it. And I'm so happy that you're sharing and this 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 message to, to others on your YouTube channel of healing because we need as many ambassadors as possible spreading this healing message of low carb keto and carnivore. So I encourage all of you to check out JT's YouTube channel, and I also encourage you to support the carnivore diet. Uh, carnivore movie diet documentary. We'll have a link to that because we need to balance the conversation. And as JT has suggested, as far away as Africa and other places, because we we are able to message things from our country to others. So again, for those who joined us, I thank you again for joining me on the Protecting Your Nest podcast. And until we do this again, continue to be safe 
be well, and continue to protect your nest. And once again, thank you, JT, for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and goodbye. You've been listening to Protecting Your Nest with Dr. Tony Hampton. For more, visit drtonyhampton.com.